Wow! Fan's still there. Okay, so I have some interesting tests to do today. Some tests to do today. Uh, one thing I want to know is how much voltage DC for this test can I apply to the stainless steel 430 wire that was at stands of state. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I've got this 10,000 volt positive power supply. Um, I'm really sure that it does have capacitors inside of it because it will discharge at a certain rate whenever you uh, apply a gap so I actually am lucky enough to have um, a DC high voltage probe I believe these were actually designed to be used for uh, TV's flyback transformer uh, Blaine has sent me one and I'm gonna use it to show what voltages I can apply to it I've already tried a thousand volts um, at work we have a mega and I took the mega and I tried to apply it across the insulation. Obviously, 1,000 volts uh, would not pass, or you know, would not jump. So what I'm going to do is I've actually got this set up here, and right here you can see you can see the wire. Now I do have right there. There's a break in the insulation. All right, so I do have a break in the insulation there, and then the rest of it is not. And what I've got is this um, 10,000 volt power supply hooked up to a variac, and I've got this meter here, and it will be um, showing me the voltage that I'm at. Um, this doesn't really work very well at a low voltage, so it jumps automatically up to like um, you know 2,000 volts real quick. Um, but I already know 1,000 volts will not break the insulation. So the reason I'm doing this test is to know what voltage this will handle. Um, and uh, yeah, so that'll be kind of cool. Uh, so I thought I'd do this, record it, film it, and show you guys because this stainless steel wire is something very unique. And I'm going to attempt to show everyone all the data they would like to know on this. Um, really quickly, I will tell you, I've taken about four different fluke meters. One foot of this is between 16.4 um, well, really, it's 16.4 ohms per foot. Um, it's, you know, right there. So it's going to take approximately 707 feet to make one choke inductor on here. Um, so I'll have to calculate this out, run it through my winder counter, figure out what we got. So that'll that's kind of my plan. And what I got here is just nothing more than an alligator clip test lead. And um, I've got this set at uh, 2,000 volts, positive potential. And what I'm going to do is apply it here and nothing. And I'll go ahead and apply it up here to the, um, the gap and we'll make sure it arcs. All right. So we're arcing there. So let's go ahead and apply 4,000 volts. All right, so I got 4,000 volts positive potential here. All right, so we we definitely arced at 4,000. Now we're not. There it goes. All right, so once I break once I break the insulation, let's just hold it next to it. All right, if I hold it next to it, nothing. If I move there, if I move towards where I already broke the insulation, you can see it's... But if I move it somewhere else, we're good. All right, so let's go up even more. So I need to remember where I break the insulation at. Let's go ahead and go to 6. This thick 6,000 volts. Oh, yeah. So we're we're definitely we're definitely arcing through 6,000 volts real easy. Now Stan did mention in his patents that the insulation should be three three thousand volts per mil, and at three thousand volts we're just fine. So let's just go ahead and go up to ten and just see how quickly this jumps through over here where I haven't touched it. 
see if I can capture this. All right, you see the wire right there? I can actually get the wire to pull towards me from the high voltage. I don't know if you can see that, but it just pulls it right in towards it. I got it jumping. Okay. You can smell the insulation burning off. It's a pretty big that's a pretty big gap. Let's see if we can burn through the stain. Turn the lights off. That is that's pretty cool to watch. Well, the camera doesn't do justice. But it's really cool when I look at it. I've got my, my UV rated glasses on so you don't have to worry about me burning my retinas. Alright, so the test on the wire is um, 6,000 volts too much. Let's bring it down to about 5. And we'll test in the spot I haven't hit yet. But it looks like 6. We can get, we were good with about 6. Yeah, it, it breaks through though. And some of this insulation might already be torn. So, there you go. There's the test on the uh, stainless steel wire. See there? I don't know if I'm in the... Yeah, I guess I'm barely in the footage, but it's actually... See, it's not breaking through there. We're at about 4,000 volts, so... But what's interesting is the, uh, <laughs> it pulls to it much, much, much strong, much more strongly because of the, um, the mag magnetic properties of it. Alright, so the bigger I make this gap, check this out, it's pretty cool. The bigger I make this gap, the hotter that wire gets. Watch it. If I get real close, it's low amperage. burned it off it's done well that was entertaining all right well it never fails that anytime you play with high voltage you always end up doing something different than what you intended to do at least that's my experience with high voltage so um, yeah there's the test stainless steel Stan Myers 430 wire and now we know the potential of voltage across um, and again this wire is magnetic 
I got it melted into my. Oh man, melted right into it. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, now I've got somehow to hang my pliers. Anyway, um, as far as uh, elasticity, um, it's uh, yeah, it breaks. Obviously, I've damaged the wire, but um, I'll, I'll pull on it and show you. You can break it. Uh, I measured it. Um, also, that really melted into this. Crazy. I've also uh, measured this stuff, and um, it measures out to be right at point zero zero three thousandths, and um, that's without coating. With coating, it's about point zero zero four thousandths. So it's right at about thirty five gauge, I believe. Um, I posted all that information in the video. The last video I had the links in that in that video. I'll put them in this video as well. Go read them. It's all about the wire and type. So my next adventure, I'm actually going to be measuring this stuff out. Um, approximately 707 feet on each inductor choke. Now, one more thing before I forget. What is very interesting, and I just I just don't have any magnets around here. Oh, there's some. Okay, so let's see if I can get this. Alright, probably see the wire. Might be, might be hard to see. Might have to go high def on this one for anybody that can watch it. But, uh, it just sticks on there. Alright, so there's your magnet. Now, uh, what was I going to mention here? Oh, yes. One very interesting property of using wire that's magnetic in a particular system such as the VIC and only using them for the inductors okay so you have this this transformer that has a steel core but then you also have um, wire that is magnetically um, attracted and so in order to cut down on amp um, well basically in order to create an amp restriction um, you can um, use the, the collapsing magnetic field to restrict the amps in a standard inductor. Well, if you can actually apply a magnetism within the wire that you're using, you may even have twice as much or three times as much amp restriction as if you were using normal copper wire. I don't know how true that is, but it's something that I've been thinking about. And it's something that makes perfect sense. If you can uh, apply this to um, what you're trying to do, which is what Stan did by using a special type of wire, high high resistivity, um, and uh, he also labels this particular wire as resistive wire. Everything else he mentions, magnet wire. This is resistive wire. So, some interesting properties. All right, this is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Check it out. And... Um, this has been an adventure with uh, the original Stan Myers Estate stainless steel wire. I might do some more tests. Um, I believe Slade Outlaw, which uh, has posted a video of this wire wrapped on a uh, core, and he's using a compass and uh, checking it magnetically. He's also um, got some, so check out that test. I'll find the video and link it in the description. Pretty uh, interesting. So thanks, Slade, for uh, the link. Also, uh, for uh, the gentleman who owns some of this wire, who has some of it, he never really contacted me back. He did once, and that was it. Don't really know what that's about, but nonetheless, uh, thanks for uh, telling me about it, and I did see your video quite some time ago about it. I think I even commented on it. Peace and love to you all. Have a good day. See ya. Hi, guys. One more thing I'd like to add about this stainless steel wire. It does not solder. The data sheet that I found about this particular type of wire, it, it, it uh, states that it is solderable but that might be some sort of a silver solder or brazing. I am using a very, very hot, this temperature gets much, much hotter than a standard um, soldering iron. This is a little uh, butane soldering iron. It gets much, much, much hotter, and I still couldn't get it to solder. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't solder if you use a silver solder or a, bra a brazing rod of some sort, but I couldn't get it to solder with a standard soldering iron. So, just one more thing about it. See you.